In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to grow cordyceps in containers like this. I'm going to be doing this using a still air box. Um, most people will be able to replicate this. It is a little bit difficult. The still air box was a bit cramped, so it might be a little bit difficult for beginners to do this technique. But follow the instructions in this video, you should be able to get some beautiful cordyceps grown inside your containers. First thing you want to do is create a jar of liquid culture like this and then run it on a stir plate every day for about an hour for around a week. Once there's plenty of mycelium in the liquid culture jar, you want to move on to making your substrate. Pull out enough brown rice for each of your containers so that the brown rice is around one or two kernels deep. It should look like this and pour the brown rice into each of your containers and then you're going to weigh out the brown rice into separate jars so for six containers i then weigh out three jars worth of rice and then take note of the weight of the rice in each of the jars Next step is to calculate how much broth you are going to need for all six of the containers. So find the sum total of all of the jars. For me, that is 726 grams. I will need to create around 1.5 liters of broth. The general mix for the broth is normally 10 grams of yeast, 10 grams of dextrose, and 10 grams of light malt extract. And also I like to put a spoonful of mealworms in just for good measure. Go back to the calculator again and you want to put in the number of grams of rice that you have in each one of your jars. For the first one here I have 258 so I'm going to measure out 464 milliliters of broth and then pour that into the jar on the left and then just repeat this for the other two jars. Once everything's been sterilized and your pressure cooker has cooled down, it's time to start preparing a still air box. So spray down the still air box with soapy water, wipe down anything that goes into it with alcohol and then place your items into the still air box. Try to think about how you organize your still air box here because I originally didn't organize it well and my first 
inoculation was terrible and I'm going to show you that but then once I had a good process I start to move through the inoculation quite fast and I wouldn't call it more sterile because there's a lot of movement going on in this still air box but it's definitely a lot more efficient and it's a much faster process. Give all your containers a good rub down with alcohol and then put the lids back on them and then just leave them to settle for a couple of minutes and really just start trying to think about how you're going to move around with all these boxes inside your still air box. I don't tend to use these injection ports anymore because they break down and then once they break down the batch is screwed so I inoculated this jar using that injection port and when I pulled out the syringe there was a hole in the port so I've had to put micro pore tape over the top of the hole so I basically now only I just open the jars quickly draw it up put the lid on the jar if I can and then inoculate. So this is the first inoculation and what I end up doing is for some reason I get all the substrate out into one box and then I put the box in front of us, get another box out, put all the substrate into that and then realise that that's a stupid idea. I should just pat it down and then inoculate the substrate, close the container and then move the container to the side and that seems to be the best way to do it. I also move the liquid culture and the substrate jar to be on my right hand side and you'll see how I start to use the liquid culture jar quite efficiently with my right hand and I draw up the liquid culture with my left hand. It sounds like a lot but you'll see, you'll, you'll see what I do and it's a much better way of doing it compared to how I am about to do this now. Inoculate each one of your containers with at least 20 milliliters of liquid culture. Towards the end, I start putting like 30 or 40 in there. Um, and they all colonized perfectly fine, but the ones I put 30 and 40 milliliters in, I was just far more confident with. They colonize faster, and obviously that reduces the chance of contamination. And it definitely gets a bit messy in this still air box, so I was a little bit worried about this one. And it's always a good idea to loosen the lids on your containers before you draw anything into the syringe. You can see here I'm struggling a bit.
In my opinion, this is where I get a little bit more comfortable with the space I've got in the still air box and start working a bit more efficiently.
So you probably get the point now where it comes to inoculation. Once you've done all of the containers, place the containers in a dark room for around three days. And then once the mycelium fluffs up and looks a bit like this, you want to move it into a light box on a 12-12 fruiting cycle. Keep the temperatures between about 15 and 20 degrees and in about six weeks time you will have grown cordyceps mushrooms. If you enjoyed this video then why don't you try watching one of these videos next.